I'm going to start soap and rest. What is soap? What is rest? How we can use soap and rest separately with which language and where it is placed. Okay, firstly we'll cover these topics. Then I'll work on the server. Something uh, different soap and rest where we are going to by our application and many more things. Very uh, interesting topics for today. So let's start with the very first topic, soap versus rest. So what is soap and what is rest? Hope you remember yesterday I soap and rest, where it is placed, how it works. Okay, so let's the figure for that, then it will be more clear to you. This one. Here it is, uh, yes. So where soap and rest is placed, it is placed somewhere over here, right? These are the protocols, these are the rules which I'm going to assign how to send my messages, how to send my request from browser to server and how to get back the response, right? These are nothing but the rules. Uh, see here, what is the meaning of SOAP? SOAP is my protocol and REST is my architecture. Okay, what is the meaning of protocol? Simply means set of rules. Okay, and architecture means the building blocks, the outline of how I can transfer my messages, how I can communicate. Okay, so SOAP works with XML and REST works with XML as well as with, with JSON. So what does it mean? SOAP, I can see XML and JSON are what? These are the two languages in which browser and server is going to communicate. Right? Message, this request can be in XML or it can be in JSON. My this request can be in XML or it can be with, within JSON. Okay? So if someone says that I am working with XML only, if message I am sending is in the format of XML, then I will say that I am using SOAP or I am using why SOAP or REST both? Because XML is something which can uh, which can work with, but JSON is something which can work with REST only. What does it mean? Instead of language, instead of language, if I say SOAP and REST, as I'm uh, talking about these two things, if I say that it's SOAP, SOAP means only language as my because SOAP can work with XML only. So if my protocol is I'm using SOAP, then it means I'm using language to communicate as XML only. Okay, but if I'm using REST, then XML or JSON, I can use Fine, but for the free version of SOAP UI, as I discussed yesterday, we do two, uh, two versions of SOAP UI. So for free version, SOAP can work with REST only. Okay. SOAP can work with REST only, but uh, not SOAP, it's REST can work uh, JSON only, sorry for that, with XML and REST can work with JSON for free version, but actually REST can be implemented with XML and JSON both, okay? Align for that, SOAP works with XML and REST works with XML as well as with JSON. SOAP is identified with WSDN. Yes, one more thing. Yesterday I also discussed about this thing. If my message which I'm sending, if my message which I'm sending is in the format of WSDN, WSDN I'll discuss about this in more detail today. Okay, so WSDN is my nothing but a kind of document which is concerned with SOAP. Fine, so its full form is web services and language. So if I'm SOAP, then surely WSDL I'm using. Okay, and if I'm working with REST, then both WADL and URLs. WADL is what? It's a web application description language. And URL is uniform resource locator. We'll discuss about these both tomorrow. Okay, because REST is a topic which I'll cover tomorrow. So I'll cover today. Then both works in request and response. What is the meaning of this line? Can you please tell me, uh, Farah, what is the meaning of this line? 
both me here both means soap and rest works with request and response format what does it means farha the what is the meaning of fourth point Ramya, what is the meaning of this line? Uh, both works in request and response format. Uh, I mean, uh, XML and JSON both work in the uh, request and response format, isn't it? Okay, listen. I'm saying my browser and server are going to communicate. It consists of request and response only. It is not possible and it is not a web service. It is not a common. If only one person is sending message, surely if I say something, if I ask you something, you are me back, right? So this is the communication. It's a two-way communication, right? From one person, uh, from one side I'm sending the message, and from the second side, I, from the second side, I am getting back the response, right? This is the thing. So surely if it is soap or if it is rest, doesn't matter. Right? Request and response will be there, right? Request and response will surely be there. So it is not a big, a big thing. Just a simple line that I'm communicating because web service is nothing but consist of request and response. Then surely request and response will be there, right? So it is like this one. It's very simple thing. Request and response will surely be there. Request will be sent from one side and other part is going to send back the response. Next is both contain some tags. What is the meaning of this line? Tags means what? See, if I am discussing about tags, tags means start tag. Tags means the start tag and the end tag. Right? I discuss about this thing. I should already discuss. And start tag. Oh, I'll say just end tag. Right, and in between value will be present. So if I am communicating, if I am sending my message from the uh, from one side to the side, and I am getting back something, request and its response, its response, then sure, it is going to communicate with the help of tags. Okay, and this is a format of which kind? It is XML format. Because XML consists of some tags and JSON consists of key value pair. And what will be the key and what will be the value? Ramya, Farha, Vijay, what is the key for, for such request? Can you please tell me if I want to write the same thing? Like, uh, it depends, like, uh, what you want to send, like, start tag means uh, with the, uh, and what value you want to send it. And you want to close, and we need to close the tag. Right, this is the thing only. Uh, like this. Done. So the same thing I can write. If I'm working with XML, it looks like this. Start tag and end tag are nothing, but the key, it's a key for my JSON, and value is nothing but a value for my key. Right. So everything is actually related. So tags will surely be there. Tags means this response uh, is going to use a particular format. Fine. Next is XML based SOAP and XML based request, uh, request and response. Okay, before moving on to this, let me explain you in a very brief where the um, browser. Let me know if you don't know about any one of the terms. Okay, if you don't know what I'm writing, if it is request, if it is response, browser is what? From where my end user is present, server is what? From where I'm, I'm going to get back the response. Okay? The question is then XML, JSON, SOAP, REST, WNC. These are the terms about which I'm discussing from yesterday. Right? So these all are the terms. So let's discuss. Here somewhere my browser is present. Uh, my browser is there where my end user will be present, and here somewhere my server is present. It is my browser, and it is my server. And if I want that they both communicate, then it will look like this. 
from the browser i'm going to get uh, get i'm going to see the request and from the server i'm going to get back response done now can you please tell me farah where is my exam question will be present can you please tell me what is the meaning of xml json where it will be present xml and json these are the languages which are used uh, for yes. communicate uh, okay yeah between the browser and the server it means request and response i am going to send in the format of xml or json right this is yes. the as you said for the communication so xml json are used for request and response a language just a language so if it is xml then tabs and if it is json then keep there so where is my soap and request present where i could write the soap and request okay done my request is in the xml format now where my soap and uh, rest are going to reside above this box uh, like a security uh, yeah that's right uh, right so here somewhere my soap and rest will be okay because the message i am going to send it must be secure so these are the protocol and the rules or the architecture the building blocks the outline which i am going to assign to my message right so these both are also done so what about wsdl wadn from where it comes What is actually the hierarchy? See, uh, let me change the color here. Yeah. So from browser, what I'll do? Okay, from the browser as an end user, I am going to send the. I am going to send the WSDL. I am going to send WSDL. Is that disturbing? Is that disturbing? Okay. So from the browser. as an end user i am going to i am going to send see what user will send user will send wsdl wadl or a url fine so if it is wsdl wsdl ramya what kind of um, security i am going to, if it is wsdl which protocol i use a uh, soap right if it is wsdl then soap only if it is wadl then rest only and if it is url then again rest okay now see the hierarchy from the user i just send my wsdl it's a link okay it's a url only it's nothing um it's a file which consists of things we'll discuss about that okay so from the browser the user will send wsdl a link uh, which which can which contains many things which contains the uh, all the services okay wadl or url from the browser i'll send these all so if it is wsdl as this this will be soap and if it is wadl then it is rest and it, if it is url then again is rest only okay so now if it is soap which language i'll use which language i'll use it is xml right and if it is rest then i can yes. use xml or json oh, both yes. okay but for my free version i could use only json for my rest fine so okay, it is more. like this yes no in case in rest if it is xml or json means it is uh, defaultly it behaves in that manner or it is uh, we need to provide in that way or uh, like okay we'll have some buttons to switch our language in which i want to send my traffic If in which I in which language I want to send my message, okay? You'll get a drop down which will ask you want JSON, you want XML, you want what? Fine, but for the free version only we do have option of JSON. We do have option, but it will not work, okay? It's application JSON. Application I want to uh, work. I want to language communicate as JSON only. Fine, it is like this only. Understand? So JSON rest we do have a drop down for that. So our hierarchy is complete. These are the three things which are done. So in the last, my message will be sent to server. 
So again, the same steps, same steps, the same three steps, examination, rest, soap, and WSGN. I'll send here. But here this time, not WSGN, I'll send. I'll just send my response on the basis of this thing which I'm getting. The language again, it will decide if it is so, XML, if it is rest, then XML or G. So this is all about the uh, jargons started about this yesterday, but today we, we are done. So almost done about the terms, the, the things which are considered, which are uh, present under your SOAP as your uh, SOAP UI testing, web services testing, web API testing. At least now you know what is SOAP, what is this. Okay, now let, let's discuss about SOAP request and response. No, is it, uh, yes. uh, is it very specific? And like if you say for using SOAP, we say if SOAP request and response, that's enough, right? If you use for SOAP, I'm just asking a particular word in case you're, when we are sending the request when we are using SOAP. Mm -hmm. So we'll just no. send, we are sending the response. Okay, okay. And okay, not, not very specific. Like, no. no. Okay. Web service or something like okay. that. No, no, no. It's just a single request. One more word you can use as you are saying. We can mm, just listen, I think. I don't know if you're able to understand. We just said one request I'm sending and uh, let me write one specific word, right? Sending one request, getting back the response. Right, what I can say, actually this is but the service, it's one service. The specific word is like this, we are sending one service and it's working on one service. Because, um, one more thing, one more thing I'll say, WSDL consists of what? Many services, okay? Defining the web services, right? Yeah, WSDL means I am introducing all the services which are present. Okay, we'll discuss about this in the last because today I'll cover WSDL as well. Okay, so if it is WSDL, if I am using one WSDL means all the services which are present inside your complete services are residing there. But if I'm using any one of the requests out of all the services, so as it is one service, so one request, one response means one complete service, okay? But in case if you don't know what is the meaning of service, if you don't know what is the meaning of web, so that's why I'm just discussing about one request and response, okay? Actually, it is a service. It's a complete one service. In the same case, WADL as well. WADL means many services. Okay. And URL means, if you remember, I just said WADL and URL both means rest. So one URL means one service. So at one time, if I'm using one URL, it means I'm working on one service. If I'm working with WADL, then it means I'm working on many services. Okay. So these all will be clear. Just wait for some more time. Okay. So SOAP request and response is what? Request and response. See here. This is the actual SOAP request which I just copied from my SOAP UI just to show you. Okay. See. Uh, one more thing I did tell you if you remember. Yesterday I did tell you that this is off. So the making of soap is okay. If it is soap, then it consists of soap header and soap body, right? And it is nothing but my soap envelope. This is my soap soap envelope, right? And this is soap header, and this is my Soap body. Fine. So request and response will look like this. But uh, today I explained soap is going to work with XML only, right? And what is the meaning of XML? XML means tags. Tags will be there. And if I say soap with XML, then me it means that soap is going to work. Soap is going to work with the Tags, soap and can you see how it looks? So this is the start tag 
and it ends here i think yes so this will be my start tag and can you see it's my soap envelope tag name is going to remain same but with a forward slash and the same thing soap header okay it's an empty tag we don't have anything within the headers but we do need to mention it it will show with the tag will tag will reside or not it's a different thing but tag name will surely be existing okay then soap envelope within this envelope it's body so body tag then multiple tags body tags tag ends over here then multiple tags are there it's retail login retail login Credentials, credentials, start tag and tag. Use start from here and it ends over here. So the thing to explain you this thing is XML is going to work with X. Uh, soap is going to work with XML. X XML comes with tag and if it is soap, if I'm going to communicate as Ramya said, then request and response will surely be there. So this is my what is request or response. We can't decide it like this. We can't decide if it is request or response. Okay, just looking at that. Okay, so this is my request and response. We could identify if it is request. If it is response, we do need a QR tool. Okay, and tags which are going to be uh, different, not going to remain same on the basis of that as well. We can also decide. But if you are uh, very new to web services, new to uh, testing, then you can't identify by looking at the tags if it is request, if it is response. This is my so request i'll say this is my request and now let's see how your response looks this is my response again which i just copied from my uh, from my soap ui okay so see again start tag over here soap envelope soap env as my envelope okay so this is my complete tag name and which ends over here with a forward slash and same thing for body over here Fine. So this is something which I'm getting from the response. Now see, this is retail, and here even it is given that it is response. But again, I'll say if you are new to new to testing, then you can't identify by looking at in the session ID and the role. See, as I said, if you if you know how it works, what all tags it is going to return you, then session ID is something. which surely you will get within the response okay for the login case so this is how it actually looks fine so it's so request and response okay now json request and response what is the meaning of this thing uh, one uh, one second uh, priya mm -hmm. yes i just wanted to uh, uh, just ask in in detail little bit about that logs for the so request and response that envelope okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can Lock. you show that slide? Yeah. That's uh, slide. I can't show you right now. With no, that request. That request. What you had earlier. Okay. 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 So this one. Yeah. These are like predefined. Oh, uh, the soap envelope, XML, uh, yes. XML and this XI. Like, what is the schema instance? This XML schema. Mm -hmm. This soap envelope. Like. Hmm. Uh, Listen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. Anything else? It has a single tag, but uh, in that we have numerous uh, multiple attributes, right? Like encoding style, so the null of X I type. Yes, you are in. From where it comes. Okay. So yeah. the thing is, you don't need to remember each and everything. As I said, this is my request, but you need to write it. Uh, less than well, then so and well up E N B E then this version name from where it comes the U R L not all these things you do need you just need uh, this is the reason that I said today I'll cover W S D L you will get that you will get the complete request without this username instead of this uh, username you'll just mention your you'll just uh, here what is present here a question mark will be there for both. So you just need to replace that question mark with your credential. Correct. Right. So all yeah. the things, all the things will be will will uh, will will be present already be there. You just need to replace this question mark. Okay. 
he just need to replace this question mark for username and password with your credentials okay two question will be there today we'll cover this thing also okay and the same thing for response when you write your uh, when you write your credentials over here you will get one second, you will get this one, complete yes so can you just uh, go to play, uh, resp uh, request Uh, what is what is this? Means these are predefined uh, tags. Means what is this XML schema instance? I just wanted to know this XML schema instance. Means what do you call it? Like these, these are picking from the request is picking from that those tags or like this W three or G. Why from that only W three or G? Okay. See, these are the versions which are available in the market where when you are XML do come. See. It's giving me the schema name with the year when it is uh, when we are from which time I'm working on that. See the thing which is um, which is full over here is this retail app of my application. And even we don't need to go through from where it comes. Even you just need to replace because this is the schema which is predefined. I don't need to change anything out of that. It is giving me this thing. See. HTTP localhost retain, then the namespaces. So credentials we do need. It is mentioned. So these are the things which are which are the properties related to the XML. Okay. So this is just the tag name. The tag starts from here, but the rest thing is something which is uh, till this. It's property related to my XML, and this is the property related to the retail application which I'm going to work. Okay, we don't need to go in as much detail from where it comes. What is the meaning of tag name? You just need to replace that username, or instead of this, you just need to replace that question mark and question mark. Okay, you just need to replace the username and password over here, which are uh, which which will be your credential. You just need to replace. For so why? Okay. The way I asked is because uh, in XML, we, as you told, it's just as simple as simple as just start tag and end tag. But in this, you can see username xxi uh, type xsd is equal to string. So since we are typing name, so it is string. So I just wanted to know like how like so how uh, the properties. These are the properties. The type of data. See, it's giving me so something you can identify what it is using. Again, the thing is, you just need to replace this one and the type of data which can decide. It is just uh, working on that. It's just showing you what kind of data can come can come at the case of the. Okay, nothing more than that. And the you are saying start tag and end tag. That one is the. The thing is. Mm -hmm. uh, wait a minute. If it is XML, then. It is a tag, start tag, and end tag. Okay, and now the thing is, it is not only XML. It is SOAP plus XML, right? So for the security purpose, I am using SOAP. So only XML means, if I am saying only XML, then only these two tags you do need, right? Because it do have start tag, it do have end tag, then the value. But if it is so this is the reason to tell you only XML will not work. We do need SOAP or REST for the security purpose, and these are the things on which I am going to work. Fine. You mean, so, yes. Okay. You mean to say it will get encrypted while going? Huh? Encrypted in, as well. It is just going to just a minute. See again. I think if you remember that hierarchy, that. Messages will be there. Then above that, soap and request yeah. will come. Then okay. above that, okay. So I'm just enclosing my complete XML within the soap, okay. okay. So here somewhere my XML. Let's discuss about XML only. Here somewhere my XML will will come. In XML, okay. my request I'll send. So okay. going to provide a complete envelope to my okay. to my request. My uh, username and password. Uh, I am just packing my message in my soap, for the security purpose. Okay, and the thing over here, WSGL is something is at the user level. I'll just send the WSGL, then I'll decide if it is WSGL, then I'm going to use soap only. Then if it is soap, then only XML. So this is nothing but the key. 
Okay, so XML only, I just need to know how to identify it as XML. Just if tags are there, then it is XML. But if it is, it consists of soap, envelope, soap, and many more things, then it is soap. Then if it is soap, then surely I'm, I'm working on WSJ. Fine. So it is a very, uh, if you are working on your soap project, then these are things is a lot. But again, only you just need to replace your question mark with your credential, that's it. And in the response, you'll get many things. You don't need to change. You, you don't need to make any change within the response. It will be as it is. You don't need to change anything. You just identify. Okay, this is my session ID. Okay, I'm, I'm the role of my credential is as a customer, and I am able to log. I log. Save. Yeah, and this is my username. That's it. So, so to identify a response, XML uh, means uh, the XML tag. So if somewhere it will be mentioned as a response, right? Like, uh, like response word. Somewhere it will be mentioned, or it, uh, we need to understand by our own. No, just when trying to identify the things. When you walk in SOAP UI, let's say if this is your screen of SOAP UI, it will be like this. Correct. So okay. here always request will come, and here always response will come. This is the one type of screen. Okay. And yep. you'll also have option to switch. You want to see okay. your request, you want to see your response. If you okay. click over here, then your control will pass to request. If you click over here, then your control will be passed to response. You don't need to remember the tag name if it is request, if it is response. Only tabs will be there. Okay. okay? So this tab is going to pass your control to request. So this tab is going to pass your control to response. Okay? Okay. And these are things we'll uh, we'll understand when we'll move on to our SOAP UI 2. Okay? Okay. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's clear? Yeah, it's clear. Okay, fine. So now let's discuss about JSON request and JSON response. Uh, okay. So Ramya, can you hear me? What, how JSON works? It works with? It works. Key value pair. Actually, key and a value will be there within double quotes. Yeah. And what will be the key and what will be the value for my case for this complete request? Uh, so, uh, okay. so, in the, no. so, in this case, username is key, Priya initial is value, and uh, password uh, is key, and SOAP1234 is value. Right. But the thing is, you start with SOAP envelope. See, if I'm working with SOAP, then I can work with XML only, right? But if I'm working with REST, then XML, JSON both. But for my case, I'll work on JSON only, right? So if I'm working on REST, then JSON. So we, do, we don't need to see, we don't need to look if it is SOAP envelope, if it is SOAP header body. So these all tags will not come. For my JSON, only these two tags. Okay. Username will be my key and Priya initial will be my value. So as a whole, this each request will be replaced by the it's username and the uh, uh, Priya, Priya initial is. Fine. So here comma will come. Then password it's it will be your key and so one two three four done so my complete request will be replaced by your uh, these two lines fine so this is how my json looks so how my response will looks it is request so how my response will looks for her how my response will look for the case of rest with json Uh, how my request will look? I'll use this login username as my key. Okay, and the what will be the value of that? This one. Right. So for my rest tags as well, my session ID will be the key and this complete will be my value. Done. So this is how my JSON request response looks, how my SOAP request and response looks. Okay? And the more will be clear if we'll move on to the, if we'll start working on the um, 
on our tool. Okay, so now let's discuss about WSDL. What is WSDL, WADL, how it looks? Just read the lines. It's acronym for Web Services Description Language. We are done. I tell you, it is used to describe SOAP. Yes, you all know. It is like a tag based document done by tag based because the thing which I'm going to communicate is surely a tag. Okay, because XML is the language which I'll, I'll use and for, for SOAP, only XML is used, which contains all the services. Okay, now WADL, it's acronym for Web Application Description Language, it is used to describe the rest. So all these things I've already done. Fine. And yes, one more thing, WADL is also, is also going to come with the tags only. Okay, and it contains all the services available under the Web API. Mm -hmm. Can you read this one? Which contains all the services under any web services. This thing, so I did explain. Where I explain this thing? See, WCL consists of many services and one request and response to one service. Okay? So this is how actually it works, how it looks, and for this as well, which contains all the services and one URL, see the line, each URL is for one single services available under Web API. Done? This is just, I've already explained, I'll just say that. We are already done, you just need to go through the things which are done. Okay, now the next topic for today is the role of server. Where my server resides. Where my server resides, Farha, can you hear me? Can you please tell me? Where my server resides, how, how it works? How you define a server, if I say just define a server? Uh, server is uh, somewhere uh, my the data is being uh, stored. Like, stored, uh, okay. I, I am requesting for something, so server would be having an answer to it and it would be giving me the answer. Right. So server is something to which I'll send the request and I'm going to get some data back and that is my response. Okay, so is it good, is it good if user is just sending the request, sending the request, sending the request, sending the request, but server is not responding? No, then I'll say it's 404. Server is not there. Server not found, right? So server is a very important thing in my complete web service because server is somewhere from where I'm going to get some response, right? If I say I'm just uh, I'm just questioning, 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 and you are not responding, then I can say you are not there, right? So server is not there. I'll not get I'll not get back anything if server is not there. So server is very important, right? So now for my case, see there are many servers for each and every site. It's it's nothing. Just to define a server, it is a third party location from where I'm going to get back the response. So for my case, as I said, I'm going to work within my retail application, okay? Uh, this is my retail application and uh, uh, just a minute, features, files, let me check. So for my case, as I said, I'm going to work within my, just a minute, let me find. Just a minute, Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Okay, so the application which I'm going to use is the retail application. I'll tell you about this in very detail. Okay, so this is something, this is uh, the one which I'm going to use over here okay so from the browser I'll I'll work on a web service with nothing but my retail application and the server 
server where I'll deploy this retail application. In this case, I'll use XAMPP and Tomcat. Okay, why these both? Because this is uh, something which is predefined already that uh, if I'm working on SOAP, then my application can deploy in XAMPP only. If I'm working on REST, my application is deployed on uh, Tomcat Apache only. So we, we don't need to uh, make changes in that. That SOAP must work with Tomcat, REST must work with XAMPP. No, these are the predefined things. Let it be like this. Okay, so for my, what I'll do, I'll deploy my retail application on the server, XAMPP and Tom. So if I'm saying I want to deploy these both, then it means that I'm going to, I'm going to install, I'm going to work with my own server, XAMPP and Tomcat. Okay, so XAMPP and Tomcat are the two servers. What is the rule of server? It's clear. What is server? It's also clear, right? So XAMPP and Tomcat are servers which are available, which I can deploy my PC on my local host, on which I'll tell you how to deploy the retail application and how to work. Understand so what I said? These are the servers, XAMPP and Apache Tomcat, which I'll deploy, which I'll install on my PC. Then I'll deploy my application, then I'll deploy my then I'll deploy the retail application on that server and then we'll test that application. We'll work on that. Understand? Is it clear what I said? Any doubt? Uh, yeah, one second. So, means you'll be installing X, uh, XAMPP and Apache on the same server as this browser and server on the, on the same machine, right? And we'll be working and retail also and we'll be working on that. Is that so, means? And... Uh, and XAMPP will be using SOAP UI services and uh, REST will be using Apache services. Is that so? No, you you are, I think, uh, mixing many things. No, I lost it. I lost yeah, it, yeah. Sure, sure. No. I'll explain again, no, no problem. So the thing is, I'll use my retail application. Let's start from the basic thing. I'll work on my retail application, okay? It will be deployed in server okay which server will not will not uh, mix both the servers but i'll say uh, tomcat both i'll just the retail application or let let one thing just use them so the application here i'm mentioning is for soap only okay i'll not i'll not discuss about rest right now retail application which is going to work with soap only i'm going to deploy it on the xamp as my Okay, so from my local, from my machine, from my, see if this is PC, as, and we are going to SOAP UI. So from SOAP UI, I am going to fire the request to the server, and that server is, 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 um, it will be deployed on my PC, but it is somewhere which is going to work the same manner as other servers work. I don't need to start my server. It will be on the third party part. It will be on my PC only. Okay, so the thing is, from my SOAP UI, I am going to deploy the retail application on the server on which I'll do testing. I'll do all kind of testing and you, then you'll be understand. Okay, so in uh, in the last, I'll say that retail application I'll, which I'll deploy on server, XAMPP, if it is SOAP, okay, and if same thing, for REST, then the server which I'll use is, so this is something which is predefined, okay? And for your case, if you are working on your project, then your, then your application, then your web service will be deployed, will already be deployed on your server, you just need to test. The thing is, only this part I am making on my own, okay? Because, see, there are many web is available surely in the market but we can't test them because this is not the GUI as I explained this is UI which I can test this is not GUI this is the API on my GUI will work so I can't make changes with this one okay and one more thing for my retail application 
to have access to my database as well. So I'll use a separate database that one separately, but not right now. I'll not discuss about that. Okay. Database I'll use uh, separately for that for my course, but this is the only thing. My application, my server, and I'll tell you how to test it, test it with the help of Soap UI. It's clear what I'm saying. Yeah, no, based on okay, clear. Okay. So, see, the reason for using my retail application is I can't make changes directly to any web service which is available and it is only two to three web services are there okay to be frank I'll say not many more services are there and for those services also we don't have database access but for my retail application we are going to work in we work on our database as well which is it is already be there fine so it's it's not uh, you can't say that it is it is going to work in some different manner it is going to work in the same manner I don't need to start my server to deploy my application generally this is the scenario in all the web services as well. okay? yeah, Priya I am not sure whether I am only facing it I don't know what other other and the team means other in the meeting schedule uh, mm -hmm. I think your voice is breaking uh, because it's so this is how I'm server the server which I'm going to use now let's discuss which all servers? I had to tell you that XAMPP, Tomcat, or I'll say that it's famous as Apache, Apache Tomcat. And for your XAMPP, what is the meaning of XAMPP? See, XAMPP is a cross platform access. We can use XAMPP in Windows, we can use XAMPP in Linux, we can use XAMPP in any of the platform okay uh, e is for apache it's a server inbuilt server for your company m is a mysql p is for Perl. many things are spreading within XAMPP. the thing which i do need out of my XAMPP is apache plus mysql mysql is used for for database okay i'll work on mysql for my database Fine, so if I'm working with Jam, then I then Apache and MySQL I'll use. And if I'm working with Apache Tomcat, then uh, uh, this one server plus MySQL as a database I'll use. You can download MySQL separately, you can install it on your machine, or you can use uh, MySQL from Jam only. Okay, so for SOAP, what you need, you just need Jam, and for REST, you need Apache Tomcat, mm -mm. Apache Tomcat, MySQL can come from XAMPP or can can be uh, can be downloaded separately, can be installed separately. Okay. So before working on Tomcat Apache, you do need JDK. Okay, so all these things which you do need is JDK. You do need Zamp and you do need Apache Tomcat. And one more thing, Zamp and this version of Zamp only it will work. Only this version supports our application. So if you are able to find the servers, the the version, then it's 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 it's. Otherwise, I'll share. Okay, I'll share these are one, two, three, and the fourth. Okay, and so I hope you have already downloaded it. Okay, so this is all about the server. Just select. So what in which flow you'll download it? First one is you'll download, you'll install JTK, then install XAMPP, then install Apache Tomcat. Okay, these all are the things, only three things. But if your XAMPP is not able to work, then you need uh, MySQL. It's not, uh, it's not necessary because I'll not use MySQL separately. Is my sequel uh, from a XAMPP only okay so tomorrow when you'll come make sure that you have JTK XAMPP Apache Tomcat don't uh, no need to install it install my sequel right now fine and one more thing there are some predefined ports on which XAMPP my sequel works okay so make sure that your all other applications are not working yet, like your Oracle it may stop, it may um, block that book. Your Skype, all these things must be closed for uh, installing these all things. So now, see, I do have 
zamp. I'll start with zamp. Okay, I don't have zamp as the hierarchy JDK will surely be there. Then zamp. Now, how to check if your zamp is working fine or not? I'll tell you how to check these both servers are or not. Okay, firstly, I'll have to work in, within zamp and Apache Dom. So if you'll start if you'll start installing XAMPP, then you'll get under C drive. Under C drive there is a folder. It will create a folder XAMPP. Then under XAMPP, so all these files all these files, XAMPP and that, yes, your XAMPP is installed. Fun, you can also change it, but no need to change it because sometimes it may it may fetch for its uh, for its path directly. Fine. So now the thing is how to check if you are XAMPP is working fine or not. As I said, there are some defined, um, some pre-decided ports are there. Right. So let's check how we can see. So within the address bar, I'll write localhost. Okay. If I write localhost enter, if you get, okay. What message you are getting? You are getting message unable to connect. It means that your server is down. Fine. Just write localhost enter within the address bar. If you get the screen, this it means your server is down. And one more. If you are done with your installation of XAMPP, just search for XAMPP. It will be like this. XAMPP control panel. Just search it. And then you can also pin it to taskbar as I have already done. Just click on to that and it will be like this. Okay. Just a minute, let me see. Fine. So for your ZAMP, these all things will come. Okay. And if I want to check my ZAMP means Apache only. If, if it is running or not, just write localhost and and if you'll get the screen like this, it means your localhost is not working. And start it, just click on to the start button. And it is giving me the option that yes, it is running. Can you see? These are the ports. So just concentrate on these services. This is the name of the thing on which I want to work. The port assigned to my server. This is the process IDs on which my server is running. And this is giving me that yes, it, it is working. Fine. There is a meaning of each and everything. You don't need or go in as much detail for the rest of the things. When you'll work, you'll surely be understood. Okay. Then again, now my server is up, right? Apache is up. So just write localhost, enter. This screen will. If you are able to see such screen, then it means that your ZAMP is running fine. Your server is. Up. Okay. Now let's discuss about Apache Tomcat. When you are done with your, when you are done. Uh, installation of Apache Tomcat. Tomcat will be visible over here and then you just need to start it. I'll select yes and it will be as I said many services may block it. Your uh, Oracle, your uh, Skype may block it. Okay and if everything is, um, is fine then it will be started. Ports will be assigned. The process ID will be assigned and then you could see the state. Okay what you do need, just go to the X bar and write local host ATAT. Okay, this one. If you write local host ATAT within your address bar and if you get such kind of screen, then it means that your Apache Tomcat is running fine. Why ATAT only? Because ATAT port is assigned to Apache Tomcat. So this is about how it looks, how we can check. And now say if, say if it is not up, say if it's not up. Then I search for local host 8080. The screen will look like unable to connect the same thing. Fine. So what you do need, just start it. And this one, yes. And then Make sure that yes, it is running. Enter and it will give you yes, Apache Tomcat done. 
Fine. So this is all how it looks, how to check and which topic is left. Deploy retail application. Okay, my servers I'm able to install. Now it's how to deploy the retail application. Okay. So my one more thing. When you are done with your installation of Apache Tomcat, it will be there. Apache Software Foundation, right? My Apache uh, ZAMP and Apache are there now to check. Now to install how to deploy the retail application for SOAP and for REST in in the PC. How to check it under E drive? Let's see it is. So these are the two applications, two folders: retail and retail app REST. This is for the retail application. If you remember, I did tell you retail app REST. It's a retail application for if it is for REST, then Tomcat, if it is for retail, only for show, then it is for ZAMP only. Okay. So just copy this folder, retail folder, and go to C, ZAMP, then HD Docs, and just paste that folder over here. Okay. So just you do need to replace the files as for your case, it will not be there as for my case, it is already there. So just cop just paste that retail folder over here. So it means that it is deployed. Done. This is all about how you can deploy the retail application for SOAP. Okay, now how to de deploy the retail application for REST? For that, this is the folder. This is the folder. So retail app REST. Just copy this folder and so REST will be deployed on Tomcat only, right? So it's C, Program Files, Apache Software Foundation, Tomcat, and then it's web app. To this path and paste the retail app rest. As for my case, it is already there, so it will ask to replace and done. Just I'll say continue and it will be paste. Done. So this is all about how you can deploy the retail application for SOAP and for REST, okay? So now the last, the last uh, slide for today, how to get the WSTL for your SOAP? Okay, what is WSTL? Ramya, what is WSTL? It's web, please tell me. In two lines, how you can uh, Development language. Description language. Uh, description language. And it, what is the purpose of this? It uh, will tell me that it is for SOAP, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. This is the thing. This is the, uh, in a very simple word, you can explain WSTL like this. Now, to, okay. See, I am able to deploy my retail application for SOAP as well as for REST. Now, the thing is, even I am able to see my servers are up, right? My servers are up. Now how to check my application is deployed correctly or not? This is the thing. Okay, so if I'm getting the screen, then it means my server is fine, it's running. Now to check if your retail application is working fine or not, you just need to write like this. Retail, just replace two words with retail. Okay, getting me what I did? I just replaced my I just replaced my zap and splash.php with retail and enter. Fine. So if I'm able to see the screen like this, it means that retail application for SOAP, it is deployed correctly. So this is something which I have to get the server. Okay. For your case, when you'll work on your project, you work on your project, you don't need to work on all these things. These all things are predefined, pre-decided. Just do it. Just send the request and get back the response. Okay. Now, just click onto this option. Can you see this? This URL, I'll just copy that URL. And this is the URL which I'm getting. Okay. So this question mark WSDL means this is the WSDL file. This is the link which contains what it contains. These all things. So we can't we can't find what is the meaning of all these things. Let it be like this only. Okay? You just need this URL. Copy this URL and use it. Now the question is 
if you are going to test any web service, what all you are going to get? If someone says that just test this web service, what you will get? Are you going to get that folder, get that the uh, tags? What you will get? You will just get this link. Okay, just use this link. This link means your complete web services. Okay, is this clear? So if I'm able to if I'm able to get this link, then it means my WSGL is deployed and it's my retail application is deployed and that, now I can work. Now, if I want to work with SOAP, what you do need, Farha, what you do need if you want to work with SOAP, what you do need? This, in, this single link, this link only. Okay, so this is the only thing I do need. Okay, so we are done till this, getting the WSDA. Only one topic is left, how to build the SOAP project. We'll discuss about this tomorrow.